In this lesson, we're going to learn how to build a random line drawing. It uses some random colors and just random placement of lines so we can draw an abstract art picture in our stage. So we're going to start off by creating a line object, and that's just going to allow us to keep track of our lines a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and call this function line. We'll give it an x and y coordinate for the start of the line and an x and y coordinate for the end of the line, and then we'll give it a color. So I'm just going to fill in the properties of this object. Also, I'm going to fill in the color. It's another property. And I'm going to give it one method. I'm just going to use this method to draw the line. So I'm going to say draw line this dot x0, this dot y0, this dot x1, this dot y1, this dot color. And we'll go ahead and make it a little bit wider than most than some lines. So we'll go ahead and create a line just to test it. And we'll say 20, 20, 200, 200. We'll make it a green line. We should see now we get a line as soon as we draw it. And there we have a nice line. So that's good. But uh, we kind of want our lines to be randomized. So we want to use some random numbers here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, create another function. We're going to call this random int. And we're going to give this a size because what we want this function to do is to return a random integer between 0 and whatever that size is. So I'm just going to return parse int math.random times size. Math.random times size will give me a random number, but it won't be an integer. So we want an integer here. We want to go ahead and parse hint. But basically, this allows me to kind of use this as a shorthand for what's inside. So now, if instead of using 2020, I say uh, random int uh, 500, and then random int 500. Let's go ahead and close our paren there. So now every time I refresh the stage, you'll see that my line is going to move around. It's always going to have that second point, uh, which is good because what we want to draw is we want to animate this so that it looks like lines are drawing all over. So we can actually do that pretty simply, but we need to keep track of a few things. We want to keep track of where we're going to start. So let's go ahead and create a couple of variables. We'll create a x and we'll start at, you know, we don't have a whole lot of screen space here because uh, we're at a low resolution. So we'll start at 300, 300, and we'll try to keep this to 600, 600, you know, as far as our width and height of the, uh, of the area we're going to draw in. Now, we also uh, are going to probably want random colors, so we can build a couple of functions to build us uh, random colors as well. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a function that's going to fill in each hex byte of the color. So a, a color can be specified as a, as a hexadecimal number with uh, two digits for the red, two digits for the green, and two digits for the blue. So in order to facilitate that, I'll go ahead and create a uh, random color function. So let's go ahead right back up to our random int, and we will say function random hex byte. And we'll just create three of these that are going to create our colors. So we'll say uh, our random number will be uh, n will be random int 256. And that'll give us a random number between 0 and 256. And uh, we'll go ahead and say color digits. We'll say n.toString 16, which will convert that string to hexadecimal. Uh, then if we want to make sure, you know, one of the things that we're going to see here, if we go ahead and just test this a couple of times, uh, color digits, you know, if we call a ran random hex byte just once or twice, and we'll refresh it so we can see C9, 2B, D0, uh, 85, A1, BC, 8C. Eventually, we'll run into one that's only one digit. Might take a few tries here. Eventually, this is actually the longest. There we go, six. So six only has one digit, so we want to actually pad that. So what we'll do here is to make sure that it's at least two characters long. If color digits dot length is equal to one, we'll say color digits is equal to zero plus color digits. And now what we'll actually get is if it's less than 10, we'll get zero plus whatever the number is. And that way, it always will be two digits, so that when we create our color, function random color, 
we're able to return just the octothorpe, the pound sign, the number sign, which uh, signifies our color. Then random hex byte, random hex byte, random hex byte. So now we have a random color. And if we go ahead and put that in our line function, we'll go ahead and say here, get random color. Oh, we just called it random color. See, it's good the debugging is there. Random color. So now every time we refresh, not only is that going to move around, but it's going to change the color as well. And you can see, you know, we're going to get a variety of colors here. So what we want to do is draw this line from starting from here. We'll go ahead and move these starting from 300, 300. We want to start drawing this line and moving it around. Uh, so what we'll have to do is keep track of the XY. Uh, and make sure that we're always starting a line with the XY and then setting the end of the line back or setting XY back to the end of the line so that as we keep drawing more and more of these we'll uh, see uh, we'll see them in a chain so just to show how that might work if I say uh, var line is equal to new line uh, X Y and we'll say random int 600 random in 600 and we'll say random color as well might as well make the whole thing random and then we draw that line so now that we've got the one line drawn we want to actually draw a couple of other lines and we want to keep track of the color as well so we'll go ahead and create a variable for our color we'll call this random color or variable color is equal to random color and here we'll just go ahead and replace this with color it's not going to change anything that's still going to say the same but it's going to allow us to use it again when we draw another line so now we're going to say x is equal to line dot x1 and y is equal to line dot y1 and color or color stays the same so we don't have to reset color we'll say line is now equal to a new line uh, x y random int 600 random int 600 and color and then we'll draw that next line. And now you'll see we always have a, a line that looks like an angle. It's going to use that second point in the line for the first point in the next line. So we want to actually animate this. This is cool and we can draw all of these extra drawings, but it would be much cooler if this looked like it was, it was being animated. So in order to do that, we need to keep track of our lines. We need to create a set of lines or an uh, array of lines. So I'm going to create an array here and you can actually use new array or you can just use two brackets just like that so now I have a whole list of lines and I'm going to go ahead and, and cut all of this out because we're going to now create a loop I'm going to call this uh, it's going to be a loop but it's actually going to work like a function so we'll use function loop and we're going to start off by getting a new uh, point so we don't want our points to be random we don't want this to jump all over the screen we want this to actually look pretty close so I'm gonna create another uh, function here I'm gonna call this function uh, random point and we're going to pass into random point a value and then a size that we want it or a size that's going to show how far away from that first value we want so we'll go ahead pass in value and size and then in my get random point function what I'm going to do is just get a random int var r is equal to random int and we'll make that equal to size but I'm going to return all the value plus r minus size divided by two and what that what happens there is it's going to create that random integer some size but uh, then it's going to return it somewhere around the value so let's say I pass in 10 as my value and size is 5 that's going to give me less you know 5 uh, minus or uh, 10 minus 2 and or 10 plus 2 so it should give me a value that's approximately close to 10 you know around 5 values from there so now in my loop I can get a new x and a new y var new x is equal to random point and we'll say x and we'll go ahead and make it for about 40 on either side of each point so these can move around you know up down left right 40 okay so now we have a new X and a new Y and we'll say line is equal to new line X Y new X new Y and color 
then we'll say x is new y, or new x, y is new y, just like we had before, but now we're doing it inside of this loop. Now, we want to uh, put our line into our array, so that's going to push it into the array, and now we will draw uh, we'll draw all of these lines out, but first we want to clear the screen so we can use uh, draw dot clear Which will clear our screen And now we want to draw all of our lines for var i is equal to zero i is less than line slot length I plus plus this is just going to iterate over each value in our lines array. We we'll use lines I dot draw Okay, so now if we were to draw, or we were to call loop once, we'd see one line. If we were to call loop twice, we'd see two lines. If we call loop again, we'll see three lines. Now if we call it again, we'll see four. And you'll see that this is going to happen over and over again. But we want this to animate. So what we're actually going to do is call set timeout. We'll pass in loop. And we'll make it go slowly just so we can see how it's working at first. So now if we call loop just one time, See, we're drawing our, our lines. So this is great, but it's going to draw, and it's actually it has the possibility that it could go off of the screen, uh, and it's never actually going to change colors. So we want to actually have it. If it gets too far away from the uh, center here, we want to make it. Uh, we want to make it change the x and the y back to the original points, and we want to also change the color. So now, uh, after we push our line, we'll go ahead and say if x is greater than 600, or y is greater than 600 and we want to keep the track of the left side too so or x is less than 0 or y is less than 0 so if any of those things happen we want to make sure x is 300 y is 300 and we get a new color so now our drawing will draw until it hits the edge of one of our bounds here the left side the right side or the top or bottom this one looks like it might get close. Keeps getting just to the edge and then bouncing back. There we go. So now we have another one. And you can see that one is, is moving as well. And this is just going to keep uh, randomizing the color and randomizing these drawings. So if we let this run or we turn it you know, way up, if we change that to set timeout 1, you'll see this moves very quickly. And it draws and it kind of looks you know, like it's sketching out a little drawing. Now you can experiment with this. You can change uh, the way that you're creating colors. You can change the size of the lines. If we make these lines, you know, if we make the dis difference in the line much smaller, it's going to look much more like a scribble. And you can see here it's also going to make much longer lines. Uh, you can also experiment and make it maybe much bigger and you'll see the lines look much more jagged and they're much more kind of uh, abstract that way so hopefully you enjoyed this so, you know this should give you a, an interesting approach to building a, an abstract art using some code uh, thanks for watching and don't forget to practice your coding